Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing this topology, basically provisioning an API management gateway in an internal mode inside an Azure virtual network. This will be a part one video and I'm going to create a second video, part two, to secure the API management gateway with an application gateway. So let's take a look at this topology. We have a virtual network, two subnets, subnet for the app gateway and a subnet for the API gateway. We have internal customers coming in from our corporate. They're connected with the VPN. They connect directly to the API gateway. They're not gonna go through the app gateway. And the reason we're doing this is we have two different kinds of I APIs inside our management gateway. We have external APIs that we want to expose to the external customer. So this external customer would be able to reach those APIs, but if they try to reach the internal APIs, the app gateway is going to drop the traffic. So they're not going to be able to reach it. However, on the other hand, the internal customers can reach both internal and external. So with that being said, let's get started. So we assume that you already have a virtual network and two subnets provisioned. If you need help creating the virtual network and the subnets, please watch my other video on creating those resources. So we will start by creating an API gateway. We uh, will pick create a resource from here, or we will click on the plus sign here. Either way it works. We search for API management gateway. And here it is, we simply go and create. Now for the, the first thing we need to do is to have uh, an Azure subscription. If you do not have, have one, please create one. The next thing we need to do is create a resource group or pick one that we have. I already have one, so I picked it. The next thing is the region. In my case, it's East US. This is the resource name where, what are you gonna call your API management? I'm just gonna call it any name. For example, focus API. This is your organization name. So your company name. And then an email address that uh, will need to be correct, of course, cause they will notify you on this email when the provisioning is complete and you will be the admin by default. Of course, I'm gonna put in the correct email, but for this video, I'm just gonna keep this one for now. We're not gonna configure monitoring for this video, so I'm just gonna skip it. We're we're not going to configure scaling. One thing I did not mention is the uh, pricing tier. Now we have several, as you can see, for our topology to configure it inside a virtual network in internal mode. This can only work under developer or premium. Since we're doing this in a lab environment, I'm going to go with the developer. As you can see, it's no SLA. The developer mode is not for production, it's for trying and testing. That's why I'm picking it. We're not gonna discuss identities in this uh, video as well. Now the next thing is choosing what you're doing. Again, you can choose to have it in a virtual network, in an internal mode, which what we're doing here. My virtual network, I already have one. And the subnet, I'm just going to go with the default subnet. 
in a public IP. Now, uh, if you don't uh, know how to create a public IP, please uh, watch a different video of mine on how to create a public IP. But I already have one, so I'm just going to pick one. Next is protocol settings. I'm just going to keep this as default. We're not going to change anything here. Review and install. And simply we're going to hit create and that's going to take roughly about an hour to complete. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when it's done. Now that the uh, <coughs> provisioning is complete, let's uh, take a look at it. As you can see, it's up and running. Now, uh, the first thing we do is we uh, need to allow a port through our network security group for management. But one thing I wanted to uh, you to uh, take a look at is uh, that the uh, management instance has a public IP address and a private IP address. This public IP address is not exposed. It's used by Microsoft only. So you don't really have to worry about it. It is isolated and secured inside the virtual network. Um, so we need to go to our network security group that I assigned to the subnet and add a rule. If you need help creating the uh, network security group, please watch my other video. So this is the rule I added. Basically, it's port 3443, and this is very, very necessary for the API managed instance to work. The source is API management, and the destination is a virtual network. That's it for, for the network security group. So let's take a look at the API management gateway again. So the next thing we want to make sure is our API instance is uh, functioning correctly. We uh, scroll down to where it says network. And we check the network status. If this is all green, then you're good. Notice the DNS server, which we're going to discuss later on in this uh, video. Uh, if it's all green, you're good to go. The next thing we want to discuss is the custom domains. So the API management gateway comes by default with your name, the, the name of the API instance, dot azure-api.net. But in production, this is not going to work. We need to use our own domain. So that's why what you need here is a domain name. In my case, it's this domain. and SSL certificate. Usually we use a wildcard SSL certificate, but you can have three certificates if you want. One for the developer portal. I call it developer.mydomain, one for the management, and one for the gateway itself, which is here. Now the way we uh, do it is basically I had my three certificates with the DNS name. We click on add. We pick what we want to do it for. So if it's a gateway, we pick the gateway. As you can see, it dimmed out because I already, it's grayed out because I already did it. But you pick the gateway, for example. You put the host name here. Let's say the host name is api.yourdomain.com. You already have a certificate, so you pick custom and you pick your certificates from here and you put the password, the certificate has to, to be in PFX format. And you click Add. So once you click Add, for example, for this, you put the password, and you click Add. Now, nothing has uh, completed yet, but we need to save. If you don't save, nothing will happen. Now, once you save, this is going to take about 10 minutes, so do them all together. So now that we uh, built custom domains, we need to uh, create DNS records 
to match or to resolve to those names. Now, uh, in, in production, you would have an internal customers who would actually connect and they would need to use this DNS name. So you'd have to have a DNS server to manage to, to resolve to this, or you can use the Azure DNS. In my case, I provisioned uh, a v virtual machine and I uh, installed simple DNS on it, basically a DNS server. And uh, what I did is I created three records for this, uh, for the developer, the management, and the gateway. I'm gonna show you how I created them right now. Of course, we also have to create external DNS records if we are to allow access through the app gateway, which we will be discussing in part two video. So this is the DNS server that I have. As you can see, I created a new zone with my domain and I created three A records pointing to the internal IP address of the gateway, all three of them with the custom domains, one for developer, one for, for the uh, API instance name, and one for management. And you uh, basically, that's it. Once you do that, you would have to go and change the DNS for the virtual network so it would use this DNS server. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. The API gateway uh, IP address, internal IP that I created in the DNS server is here. This is my IP address, you go to the overview. Now, in order to change the DNS for the virtual network, I'm sorry, for the API uh, gateway, we would go to network, network status, and look, I have my virtual machine IP address. Now, in order to change it here, we would have to change it for the whole virtual network. And what we do is we search for our VNet, which we created the uh, resource in it. We uh, scroll down to DNS servers. And by default, this is sitting on, this would be picked, you would pick custom. And then this is the IP address of my virtual machine that I uh, made a DNS server. You click. You add the IP and you click save. Once you're done, this is gonna take less than a minute. Once you're done, you go back to your API management gateway. You go to a virtual net to a network, network status, and now you have to apply the network configurations for this for the IP address to be your local IP. This is gonna take about 40 minutes to apply. So make sure you are entering the correct IP address for the uh, DNS server. Now that the network settings applied and the API gateway is using my internal DNS server to resolve the names, let's verify that it's actually working. So I'm gonna ping the developer dot my domain and see what IP address it resolves to. And as you can see, it is resolving to the IP address here. Same thing is going to be for, for the, uh, ma the instance name and the management. Of course, they don't ping, but it's showing the correct IP. So once the DNS basically applies, you want to go back to network, network status, make sure the DNS server is correct here, and make sure it's all green. If it's not green, you would need to work on your DNS server. However, if you provision just a simple DNS server, or if you used Azure DNS, this, is, this should work with no changes. Now we're gonna test our APIs and make sure we can reach the APIs and, uh, and uh, internally, of course, this is non-reachable externally. Uh, we're gonna do part two with an app gateway to uh, create routes and secure it with an app gateway. But for now, internally, if you go to APIs, this, this echo API comes uh, by default with the API instance for testing. And I created one here, which is a Microsoft API. If we go to this default one,
we can test it out using an, an app called Postman. Uh, I'm going to show you where to download it from and how to use it if you've never used it before. So we are going to uh, download Postman API Tester download. And this is uh, the app. It's free to get started. You click on it. And you simply download it. Once you're done, you install it with the defaults. So once we're done with the installation, here it is. We're going to start testing our APIs internally. So if I go to API and if I go to the Echo API, as you can see, if I go to settings, This is the URL. I added the word internal. So what I'm going to do is for any internal API that I need my end users internally to reach, I'm going to add internal suffix. So the, the uh, basically the uh, URL would be my domain slash internal. And then we copy this to the postman. And then we uh, we get the uh, API itself, let's say the retrieve resource, it's slash resource. So this would be the one we're going to put in Postman. Now also, what I did is disable the sub subscription required, unchecked it to make things easier. I don't want to go copy the subscription from here, but, it, but you can if you want. I'm just doing some testing, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to send. And as you can see, it's 200 OK, it succeeded and got me the value. So now, so now I created the API gateway. We secured it with uh, SSL certificates. We gave it customer domain names. We configured the DNS server. We tested an API internally and all it's working. Uh, now the next thing we need to do is just to access the developer portal. The developer portal is basically here. You go to a portal overview and you click on developer portal. Once you click on it the first time, it'll just appear, you publish it, and then you enable course. This would allow a different uh, domain, like your own domain to reach it. So again, you uh, click on developer portal from here. It'll open up for the first time. You come back after it opens. You click on publish and then you enable course. Once you do, you're, you're done with that, it's all set internally. And now we need to go to part two, which is uh, going back to our topology. We've done this part here. And now we need to create this part, which is the app gateway and allow external customers to reach the developer portal and the, um, and the APIs. Now, just to give you an idea what the developer portal will look like after you publish it, of course, you're going to have to, uh, customize it to your company's need, but I left it as, as, so this is my custom domain name for the developer portal. And if I, uh, open it as you can see it opens you can say explore apis and here are the apis as you can see so on and so forth so uh that's it for this video we'll, i'm going to create part two for uh uh for the app gateway please don't forget to subscribe and like this channel to support it Thank you and see you in the next video.